what's good internet and welcome to session ho 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 it's a halloween episode we're gonna call this the ween episode 2023 <laughs> we're not like that. is that because they're hot dogs this Home is super dogs. gg radio where we <laughs> where friends chat about video games and all things adjacent oh, i'm your donkey kong host eric getty gettinger thanks for getting dressed up guys with me is spooky Alex Arona. I'm wearing my Extra Life shirt. Which Extra Life shirt? The one I got from going to Lori's Children's Hospital and hanging out at their event. Can you... What was the name of the hospital? Uh, Lori's Children's Hospital? Lurie's? Lori's? Lurie's? Lori's? Lurie? Lurie. Lurie. Thank you. <laughs> we also have Spooky... <laughs> Ooh, spooky Joel DeWitt. We are a members-only podcast, so make sure you bring your membership card to the podcast <laughs> app of your choice. If you, if you can't tell, I definitely came from a Halloween party. Oh, finally, we have Spooky Alec Parks. Boo! That's all I got. <laughs> Is it weird that I didn't bat an eye and didn't, like, I was not... I didn't put it together that Getty is dressed up for a Halloween costume. I thought he was just like dressed in a onesie throughout the house. And I was like, yeah, that's just Getty. No, it's and then he's like, oh, I went to a Halloween costume. And I'm like, oh. Not, not what I, I actually had to cut out a little early so I could make it in time for this. So let's, The Walking Dead, spoiler episode, season one. Let's go. This is our Halloween episode. This is yeah. this is our Halloween episode. So what, what do we, we do every Halloween? What do we do every Halloween now? Three years running. What did what what we normally do is we pick a game that we think is kind of a, kind of a gem, something that's been out there that people should be aware of, and we play it. And we classic, you would say. I, I might call it a classic. It's definitely old enough to be uh, up there. But this year we picked. The Walking Dead. So what we are going to do is we are going to talk all about The Walking Dead Season 1 from Telltale. And we're going to go episode by episode. We are going to spoil this bad boy. So if you don't want to hear it, you exit now. <laughs> Hopefully we have a couple of listeners that went ahead and they played it along with us so that they can enjoy some of the moments that we definitely experienced. Um, or they can feel bad with us. Because that's what this game is about. So Telltale, Joel, what is a Telltale game? What do you expect from that when you hear Telltale? Uh, when I hear Telltale, I expect a episodic game series focused primarily on the choices you make and the repercussions you have for those choices. Uh, they are adventure games, point-and-click adventure games, kind of, in that vein, except a lot less puzzles and more uncomplicated like click this to open that kind of thing mm -hmm. it it's not really vague that's pretty clear where you need to connect things and it the story and dialogue are came here like no matter what happens in this their, their story and dialogue are critical you will have some quick time events where you're having to like button mash if a zombie's on top of you you're trying to tip them off or there are certain moments where you have to take shots or, or kick and you have to actually have to aim a lot of timing based stuff that can either result in a bad outcome for somebody you want to be around or mm -hmm. for yourself. Yeah. That's and like and like many choice driven games ends in a recap. <laughs> Beginning in the end of the episodes. No, well, I was more talking about how like it's a plot driven point where like people different people, but specifically at the end Someone will be there and go, you did this thing. Mm -mm -mm. You yeah. also did this other thing, and I didn't love that one. You know, it's like, it's, it's, it's they want you to feel bad. It, it is worth noting that this is Telltale's like first breakout hit, right? They had uh, done like they had done the Back to the Future games and Sam and Max, and they were not this. Kids. This was hype train because everybody was getting back into The Walking Dead. Uh, I, I want to say like it's season, ten, like three seasons deep by the time, so it was still yeah. In the, but this is ten like, years okay. old, jumping into this, so they were on the bandwagon. The Walking Dead was a hit comic at that point because they had made it uh, into a TV show. 
Yeah. Yep. Yeah, so first season was a real good one. The you talking about the game or the season of the actual TV show? Both. Both. I have I, never watched a single episode of The Walking Dead. I'm I would, with you, Alec. That, I've that got some one, comments. That, if you really, if you <laughs> want, Alex. like, uh, if you want, like, hey, this is what the show is. Episode one is just like, I want to say they've never gotten better. Like every every episode <laughs> after episode one has been generally worse than that. Wow, and, way to sell it. Well, yeah, no, right. but that, the, the thing, that's the, what I'm saying is that that's more of like the raising of how ca- like how high a caliber it was. That like first episode, boom, best show, episode of the show. Everyone was super hyped. I remember we watched it in college. The we watched the premiere when it came out, and I was blown away uh, just by that first episode. It is pretty close to the source material, so I can see why a lot of people really dig it. You know, it has its ups and downs, much like what we're going to talk about today. So we have kind of a special um, difference in the way that people played. This time, I played it on PC. Uh, Alec also played it on PC, but Joel played it on an Xbox? Correct. And Alex played it on his Vita, his PlayStation Vita, his wow. Sony PlayStation Vita. Well, okay, because okay, playing so the game wasn't suffering enough. In my defense, <laughs> there's no in defense. My, there was a it was a free on PlayStation Plus a long time ago, mm-hmm. long long time ago, and when they gave away Vita games, <laughs> and uh, I remember being so hyped because it got such amazing reviews and I played it on the Vita and it was fantastic. I had a fantastic time. I laughed. I cried. It was an, it was an emotional moment. What are you laughing and, uh, about in this game? There's some humor. Some of the achievement there's a, names. There, there's, yep. there's moments of humor in this very bleak, awful world. <laughs> it's usually but bleak I, and awful. I will say going yeah. back, the Vita can no longer handle this game. <laughs> it cannot. It, can, it, cannot. So, it was... It was it was held together by duct tape. You see every seam, every stutter. There's a there's like a two you hit pause and there's two seconds before the pause menu appears. And uh, it's just really jarring. The audio it's it's a whole thing. Like and, and I'm not I will never say that this is a bad game. This is a phenomenal game and I'll recommend it to everybody. I would also just recommend not playing it on the Vita. All right. Thank you for the glowing recommendation to not play it on a dead <laughs> system. Uh, okay, so The Walking Dead Season 1. Episodic. First episode opens up to Lee Everett on his way to prison for a crime that you'll find out about later. But, you know, it's a spoiler cast, so let's just jump right into it. Lee is accused... And uh, looks like uh, convicted. actually <laughs> convicted of killing his wife's lover, who is apparently a U.S. senator, right, or a congressman, <laughs> or like a, somebody, like a somebody choice, important. Right? Yeah, well, he he got upset and he took care of business. What that does for the character over the course of the game, you know, we can we can jump into that, but. All right, guys, first impressions. I know that some of you already played this before, so I think we need a first impression from Alec. When you are sitting there making the dialogue choices um, and you start to see all of the police cars, all of the ambulances fly past, and you know it's a zombie game, but what are you thinking? I'm thinking I'm glad I'm not going that way. I seem to be headed in the right direction. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's a good point. Is it? Uh- <laughs> i mean it was going fine up until the sheriff started talking to me and wasn't watching out and then drove his car off the road after hitting a walker yeah yeah it escalates very quickly so from there uh you're propelled off the road and uh, the next the next opportunity you get to control the character uh there's already a corpse off in the distance and you are kind of like at the mercy of, okay, I got handcuffs on. What do I do? It's, so, it's the corpse of the police officer. Mm-hmm. Yes, it is. Like he, he got tossed right out of that car. I I don't know how I felt about the police officer. Like, he, he believed you're innocent, but also seemed totally fine that you're being sent to prison. 
<laughs> being innocent. Well, I mean, you have to think about that. It's like his, he's not the judge. Yeah, yeah I, I I know he's a card in the system, but he's uh, just the law. <laughs> you know what? What is like the, one of the worst quotes you could ever say is like, "I was just doing my job." My job. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Doing what someone told me to do. It's like, ooh, that that's a. Uh, but you you crash land. It's a really abrupt opening. Like you, you think about most games, I don't feel like you usually get thrown into it so harshly for a lot of games anymore. Uh, and the tension is just right there from the beginning with you having to walk up and, and grab the tees from him for your handcuffs, have the fun sort of faked out where you drop the tees and have to pick it back up. Mm-hmm. It, it's they, they set the table really well, really quickly for what you can expect out of this game early on. Yeah, you don't know when you're going to get your first jump scare or when you're going to get your first zombie. So for you to have to like go up to the corpse and you're like, okay, is this going to be it? When's it going to happen? <laughs> oh, is it? Yep, he's going to jump out. I don't know. Excellent, excellent. Um, and eventually he does turn. But that's uh, one of the easier encounters. <laughs> so, well, they got to start you off. So. Yeah, nice yeah. and it, nice and they, slow. They, they tease some of that. They have you stooching back. They have you looking around and finding a bullet and uh, the shotgun and fiddling with it. it. It's a good introduction about what kind of controls you can expect out of it. And early on, they also do a good job of the dialogue choices you get. Most of the time, you've got a timer that is slowly whittling away that's kind of forcing you to make a decision on what to say. Um so they very early they set the the states for that and the, show you the systems pretty well. Yeah. Yeah. Which which yeah the systems end up being just like okay I gotta move, I gotta look for items, I gotta have these conversations kind of quick, I gotta like it just really here's everything you need. So you're gonna be doing it a bunch. Important uh, distinction there. You normally get three dialogue <laughs> options and then you get the infamous silence. Dot dot dot. Yeah. <laughs> you get the opportunity to not do anything and that is probably the most damning thing that you can do in this game is to miss an interaction or to just let it go and then the silence to pervade because everybody's always like up in your face and they they want you to say something um okay i definitely have like i definitely had uh, had i think like two where i just wasn't paying attention and i was like oh crap they want me to do something yeah yeah, there were only a couple of times where I just didn't say anything. Um, first time for me really was in episode two, but we'll get to that later. Uh, hard choice there, huh? Yep. All right. So we make it out of the woods and we make it into a backyard. And that really gets us to the next plot point of that first episode. And this is when you begin to encounter... A uh, another character, another main character of the story, Clementine. Uh, it's a weird interaction if you really think about it, but it, the world is going to hell. <laughs> What's the weird interaction? <laughs> uh, that there's this girl that this small child who is in a treehouse, and you've now broken into her house so that you can get some medical attention or to, to see what you can do, uh, but now. Uh, you, uh, well, you become her ward, basically. Or she becomes your ward. It, yep. it is funny how quickly she becomes trusting of you. Just a complete <laughs> stranger. Yeah. Right, right. And, and Grant, you I mean, you find out the situation is basically yeah. she was at home with her babysitter. Her parents were in Savannah, Georgia on vacation, and they didn't come back. And her babysitter turned, and she'd been sort of holed up in her treehouse being safe so maybe any living face was enough for her to be like where right. i am but it, it is that's, that's more for me like where i was like oh, okay that seems that seems like the right move the babysitter tried to murder you okay yeah well yeah i guess any but you do and later also, find out in her, in her, also in her defense you also find out later on that she was prepared to drop a hammer on your head Very and you true. weren't the first person who came to her house either so the line gets a little muddled there, like, do you trust this person? Do I not trust this person? But, uh, yeah, we introduce Clementine. And Clementine, again, a uh, youngish girl, eight years old? Yeah, seven or eight. eight. 
Yeah, it, during the course of this story, and she is alone now. There's nobody with her, and she just wants to go and find her parents. So Lee, being the the actually really good guy that he is, mm-hmm. decides, you know what? Yeah, we can go together. Um, and then it, it just kind of goes from there. It gets kind of crazy. You hitch a ride with a couple of guys that you help out as they're trying to get home. And it introduces just a couple of characters uh, really quick and then a couple of characters that are going to stick with you. So, Alex, tell me about Kenny, who you meet at the farm that you get dropped off at. Kenny uh, is... (laughs) What can I say about Kenny? Yeah, Kenny is both problematic and not problematic. He's the Florida man. (laughs) Yes, he is. He's a Florida man with a heart of gold. Yeah, He is Florida man. Depends on what it depends on where you go. I right, so Kenny is uh, the patri- patriarch patriarch of a family uh, where his wife is what French? No, uh, her wife's a veterinarian. His wife's a veterinarian. I know oh, that. You mean uh, like is. what? She's got a real thick accent. She's got uh, a like a thick. Her name's Katcha or something like her. Or yeah. yeah, yeah. And then they had their son Duck, which also again like Katcha and Duck. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> well, he, he's he's Kenny Jr., right? Yeah. He's, Dutch is a nickname. Right? So. Oh, is it Kenny Jr.? Okay. Yeah. yeah. So uh, you meet them, and Kenny's a real man of loyalty. He will, he will definitely always have your back if you have his back, and as soon as you don't have his back, he will just turn on you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Getting over a cough. He will turn on you, and he will stab you. In the face. Uh, I don't uh, think he's me- metaphor. There we go. There we <laughs> go. Salt block on your head physically. That's that's the reference that I was waiting for, but that doesn't happen until a little bit later. So let's not get too too ahead of ourselves. Uh, but this is the first opportunity where you have that life or death situation. So during the course of doing some, you know, choring around the farm, uh, duck is playing on one of the farm pieces of farm equipment and uh, the son of the owner of the farm he's just trying to do some repairs to a fence because he's like dad it's crazy out there we should really like shore up our defenses and that's when the zombie strikes that's when you're given the opportunity like do i try and save duck or do i try and save this nice gentleman who helped me get here to this farm and they made it very obvious when there's going to be an either this or this choice when it comes to saving someone this Only? is the first time but they they have it recurring <laughs> throughout this entire series yeah uh i saved duck even though he was clearly at fault for the situation mm-hmm. yeah um, i mean because he he, he pin well he pins the the guy with the tractor that's part of the problem was uh, that it yeah. yeah i thought it was just a walker attack no, no. He, was, he was pinned and then the walkers came toward him oh, yeah okay yeah, his le- he duck ran him over with the tractor. His leg was caught under it. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, uh, the first time I played this, I went with the guy. This time, I went with duck. I tried. I tried to like purposely go in different directions this time. Mm-hmm. I regretted it. I went with the guy. <laughs> you went with the guy. Yep. Oh, Kenny didn't like that. I'll tell you that. Much. <laughs> I did not like that. <laughs> <laughs> Kenny will remember that. Yeah, and that's um, and just. That's it's another thing that you got to keep an eye out for. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, that, that's another cool thing about the series, too, is that they, when you make those choices, those impactful choices, they will say, like, Kenny will remember that, or Katcha appreciated your kindness or something yeah. like Tell your that. Honesty or something. Yeah, yeah. So they, they give little cues beyond just the character facial expressions to make sure you understand the consequences of your actions and i also just wanted to throw in there for reference um just so we're, we hit every point here um the 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 owner of the farm herschel herschel he is from walking dead season two i don't oh. think it's the same herschel is it no i think it is supposed no to be, i, think I don't think dead it's the show his son's already dead but he has, like, a bunch of other people living there with him in the show. And I don't think this is the same Herschel. No, I didn't remember hearing that there is a character in this season that ends up well, on the show. That's Glenn. The other one was um, yeah. The, yeah. the Asian dude. 
and you do run into Glenn during this Glenn. episode. So, yeah. uh, but that gets us to the next part, <coughs> really, is that after you're forcefully ejected from the farm, whichever decision that you make, you have to go. And uh, that's when you get <laughs> thrown in with a whole bunch of other people. Um, if memory serves here... This is where we end up at the pharmacy? Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah, so they, they make their way to the... I don't think they were initially planning on going to the pharmacy. Weren't they sort of pinned down by uh, zombies they, and forced... They ran building? out of gas. That's mm-hmm. it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and they're in Macon, Georgia, which is Lee's hometown. And that so happens to be Lee's parents' pharmacy that they're making it to and that it's been holed up. And, and uh, boy, those people are not happier there. And they're not because they're already pinned down in this area. <laughs> and uh, you're just like, oh, hey. And then somebody has a, like, hey, we should save these people moment. Yep. Yep. Doug. Oh, good old Doug. Doug died. <laughs> yeah, he did. Sure did. <laughs> Brutal. And at, and at the same time, like you have uh, a new cast of characters at the the pharmacy that there. One guy, extremely kind of racist and angry all the time, uh, and his daughter, who's like he's an older guy, so yeah, uh, his daughter's like your age. Her name was Lily. Uh, he is Larry. Also an, yeah, Larry. Larry. Also yeah. an L name. Easy Wait, to remember Larry? them. Larry's a real jerk. I told Kenny to punch him. Me too. <laughs> I tried to remain neutral and kind of peaceful about it. Kenny did yeah, not appreciate that. that. Right? Of yeah, you, you know if if, you, if there's something you learn from this series is that neutrality doesn't get you anywhere. Yeah, like all, all you end up doing is pissing off both sides when you do that. Got to make a choice. You can't remain. And they even start saying like you can't be both sides on this, and it's like, but I want to like, be. Oh. <laughs> But you're only a well, no, dick that, 10% like, of the time. <laughs> no, it's more like funnier to me because it's like, hey, we uh, we got to go get outside to get food. Do you want to go or me go? And then they, the two people start arguing. And it's like, who's going to go? And then you're just like, I don't know. One of you can go. And like, you can't be on both. You, gotta, <laughs> you can't be in the metal. It's like, what? It's like something very simple. Make like, somebody like, die, simple. Alex. <laughs> somebody has to die. It's like, what? But yeah, it's... No, they don't. You guys are going to get some food. That's really what it is. Um, so you find your way to this pharmacy that turns out to be Lee's family's pharmacy. And you can play it, you know, either way you can be honest about it and be like, oh, this is my family's pharmacy. Or you can just not tell anybody that because that's your business. Whatever you I want to do. I kept it to myself because everyone kept saying, like, I heard about this family that owned the pharmacy and their son murdered somebody. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, mm-hmm. weird. Yeah. Do people need to know that about you? No. No. <laughs> Not till episode two. <laughs> I mean, you you, you get a couple hands of... A little, your hands a little forced yeah. at some point. But. Yeah. Well, the, kind of, but also there's like a point where they say, you should probably just tell people. And then like later on it does come up where someone's like, your hand is forced. And then there's one person that's just kind of like, you didn't tell me? <laughs> like, I don't know you. You're a new character. Why would you tell why would you tell me about something that happened before the world ended? Yeah. <laughs> Cuz that matters like now. We've been going for like a year. But let's that be was honest. It's only like 3 months. Which which elected official doesn't deserve uh <laughs> Never mind. Yeah. Never mind. All right. <laughs> let's oh, make politics this are weird. <laughs> politics are weird. Yeah. Uh, but uh this is where we get a couple of puzzles, a couple of, uh, you know, you got to go here before you go here and find some things around the pharmacy. You can find food for people. You can find batteries. Uh, I love the interaction with the, the one female character who is trying to get the radio to work. Um, Carly. Carly. For, first she doesn't realize that the batteries are missing. Yep. <laughs> and then, and uh, yeah. And Puts then she needs them. It's like, oh, the batteries are backwards. Yeah, yeah. Just she's great at reporting and awful and shooting awful at that. Oh yeah, can't, can't yeah. She's kind of battery. mentions though. She's like, oh, electronics aren't my thing. I'm not a tech person. It's like batteries. <laughs> but I can use this gun. Yeah. Hey, hey, Doug. I know you're into tech. <laughs> Would you like to be into me? Oh. Which also Poor I Doug. will say at the, at the other part of that is that like at one point one of the puzzles 
you have to figure out that you have to take a, a universal remote and somehow program a whole wall of TVs to it across the street. Mm -hmm. No universal remote does that. I mean, did you I've try to all the TV codes? What did you try to open the combination lock with the universal remote? Sure did. No, I did. <laughs> Doug was like, it may be universal, but it doesn't work like that. <laughs> oh. The interactions are fun in this game. And they do give you a little bit of like leeway. I'm told that if you kept, if you you broke, you could break down the door with the axe. But I could never figure out that option. Break down the door with the axe. You're talking about the like, gate out front with the lock. No, I'm talking about like someone said that like you don't need to go outside to get the key to the back office. Really? Mm. Like when I you don't get the? Know if that's true. You're, you're talking yeah. about the axe when you go out to. Uh, yeah, and you come back, and supposedly you could use if you keep using it against the door. It'll eventually actually break. Huh. Really? Supposedly. I didn't try it that much. I was like, I'm just going to go outside and figure that out. Because when I tried it, it didn't work, but I only tried it like twice. Hmm. Okay. Didn't try that at all. Uh, yeah, so you are inside of this pharmacy. Uh, Larry is having... <laughs> Larry's an older guy, and he's got some heart problems... And some rage issues. So there is an altercation. There's a lot of shouting. And uh, eventually Larry starts to have an episode. And he needs some... What is it? Nitroglycerin. Nitroglycerin from the pharmacy so that, you know, he can get his uh, ticker working again. Now, I've heard of this before, but what is this? What is it? It helps, uh, it helps with your blood so that you can process the oxygen? Is that how it goes? I thought it was supposed to lubricate your heart valves. Valves, okay. I don't know though. I am not a doctor. Yeah, we should okay. get a I we should get a doctor in here. If anybody had heard of something like this, because I was like, I've heard, I need my nitroglycerin pills, but I'm like, that seems like a TV thing and not a real. thing. Nope, that's a real thing. The, yep. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Yep. Um, so you uh, you need to get in, but at the same time, Glenn who is from the Walking Dead TV show, he is also uh, around when you first reach the pharmacy, but he decides to go out and look for some supplies. And then he gets pinned down at a motel that's a little bit out. Uh, you go there, you save Glenn, and then, uh, you know, anything you want to talk about with the Glenn encounter? Do you want to talk about the, <laughs> the girl I, he was I mean, trying to save? <laughs> I mean, how did you guys oh. like that whole sequence of gameplay there the kind of like sneaking around mm. and figuring out the right puzzle to sort of need to break this window in order to get a, a shiv and then sneaking up behind the zombies and and killing them one by one you gotta love the uh, old pillow as a silencer trick they yep. use which again they still are like a foot away pillow against the head gun a foot away and that's gonna silence it it's gonna do something all right yep definitely did yeah it, it was fun it was fun you get the spark plug to break a window to do a whole other thing which i was like oh spark plug we're gonna we're gonna get the car running nope you're just gonna use it to smash a window i guess mm -hmm. i like the smashing and pinning the one zombie with the car yeah that was pretty fun <laughs> that was good that was pretty good yeah, yeah, yeah. that was very good yeah uh, I'm not sure how much there is to say about the interaction. Basically, there's a, a girl holed up in a motel room. Uh, she got bit by her boyfriend who died and then turned on her. Uh, she begs you to kill her since you force her out of her space. So I guess... No, I think, th I think there's something to say about this interaction. What did you guys choose to do? I gave her the gun. I did not. <laughs> I can't remember what I did. I think she, but she somehow she still got it. Oh, yeah. Oh, she still gets it. Cause so yeah. if you, at least when I chose not to give it to her, mm -hmm. she tries to go for it and everybody's fighting over the gun and the balcony that you're standing on, the support gives way and you all Breaks. fall yeah. to the ground. Cause I was like, I didn't give her the gun, but I remember <laughs> her still shooting herself. Yikes. And that's what happens. I, I just let her take care of it. One of the no, best we've... parts of that is she she based like the prompting of her wanting the gun. She just says, "Can I borrow your gun?" <laughs> yeah, and then and it's like, like just real quick. What, what do you mean for? borrow? <laughs> well, again, just real quick. We'll give it back. I promise. Yeah, it's like Alex. Can I borrow a bullet? 
Just, just re- if only if you're gonna give it back. <laughs> you sure? Then okay. You can pry it from my cold, dead hands. But it was like pretty grim. Like everyone kind of comes back very different. Like, oh, how'd it go? It was fine. <laughs> I got this axe. Yeah, I got this axe. This is fine. <laughs> it was very. Is, is there, there was some, Which again, there was also something about like him being obsessed with saving her because she's a girl. <laughs> Glenn, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's kind of that was kind of Glenn's arc. A lot of those in the show. Glenn is uh, horny like, all the okay. time. He, he, all right, yeah, he's always been like that in the show. He's not. Hor- I wouldn't call him horny, but I, I will also say that like he's also somebody that's just like I could fall in love. Zombies or whatever, but I could still fall in love. Like I just I got to find the right person. I'm gonna go. F- Everybody's a prospect. And it's like, oh, okay. That's yeah, he seems like everybody is the right person, though. Mm-hmm. As long as they've got a pulse. Yeah. At least it's that. Yep. And so then that's how he was in the show, too. So it's one of those things, which I love. I do love that actor, though. I do love that actor. Oh, yeah. But just really horny in this, too. Okay. Yeah, and I, what I will say, though, that the fact, like, that whole moment, it does come, like, it does kind of speak to how, like, hard the emotional beats hit in this show or this game like it's just hard like that that moment is there's no there's no brevity there it's just like boom oh crap cut to black you know yeah all right continue keep us going we're we're moseying along i'm gonna cut this down a little bit um because once you get back, there's a couple more puzzles that you have to take care of, but you do end up with one more choice towards the end of this chapter, uh, and it's who are you going to save between Doug and Carly? Mm-hmm. Who do we all choose here? Carly had I, the gun. Yep, Carly <laughs> had the gun. <laughs> Everyone chose Carly? I. So Kelly and I are playing two separate playthroughs. I chose Carly. In my playthrough, we chose Doug in our shared one. Uh, the same logic. It was Carly has a gun. She can take yeah. care of herself, right? <laughs> nope. 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 I chose Carly again. The first time I chose Carly as well, and I still just like every t- the more I like the more I'm playing this. Like when I finished it, I was like, man, I didn't like Carly. <laughs> she kind of she has a, she's a real like busy like she's really nice to you, but then plays into like. You know what you should do. It's like that. Yeah, sure. Tell me what I should do. <laughs> You're right. Dud Dud is very much more chill than Carly is. I agree. Yeah, with that. she's just very like opinionated and that kind of little judgy. Mm-hmm. A little judgy. All right, keep us going. Yep. So uh, it's no longer safe to stay uh, in the pharmacy. So where do you go? You go to the motel, and that'll you be. You already killed all the walkers. There. <laughs> yeah. That'll be the end of that episode, and then everybody should feel okay after the end of this episode, right? We're just now on the downward spiral. Um, yeah, it, it doesn't get great. <laughs> and so then we're we're experiencing a whole different set of other stuff that we have to worry about. So let's just jump right into episode two. I'm not going to go as far in detail, but there is some stuff that I want to focus in on this. Uh, because of how weird and wild it gets. So I'm just going to do a quick uh, summary. If there's anything that you guys want to jump in and and throw out there, you do so. Uh, So the second chapter opens up to, you know, you're all out. uh, This is with the kids in the woods, right? Is that how it starts? Yeah. Okay. All right. So you start out with uh, you and Kenny out in the woods. and um, one No, it's you and Mark. You and Mark, but Kenny's also there. Kenny comes running up. Oh, hi, Mark. Yeah. <laughs> As Mark is a guy that you and you found, who uh, yeah, you found. They, they it. introduce they introduce him in the beginning of this episode. Like, yeah, unprompted, and they fill in minor details of, oh well, he came across your group, and I think he had supplies, and that's part yeah. of why they allowed him to stay. <laughs> that's yeah. that's why they, they, they um, get into a big fight la- like later on, and they're like. You were only here because you had food, and now that's gone. Why do we still have you? <laughs> but that's how you know he's important, is that he gets introduced like that. Yeah. I think that this episode with these two characters were some of the weakest characters. Just because I feel like they, again, introducing them that way, and then also the one, one of the teens 
you get one of the teens to join you and that teen is just problems from from the jump mm. i mean you got a cool chance to you know saw off a person's leg so that's cool yeah he they're there with their it's two teens and their coach yep and the coach has got his foot stuck in a bear trap and you got to save you got to save him but while you're doing so one of the teens gets killed by the walkers so you and the alive teen take the coach back did you guys saw off his leg or what'd you guys do chopped it off chopped it off off. yeah okay yeah apparently you can choose something else I, I held off a long time. I, to, like they gave me like the prompt like four times. They did the prompts. They ch- they give you the impression that you can saw off the chain because he's got a bear trap and somebody modified the bear trap where you can't open it back up again. No, and that's what I'm saying is that I did. I did that four times. Yeah. I saw the chain four times and he's like, it's not budging. And I was like, we're really not giving me a choice here. <laughs> he's just like, oh, we're just wasting bullets at this point. Make the decision. Yeah. That's it, yeah. It, it's it's not really consequential to the broader story, but it is a good introduction and just good reminder of oh yeah, you're in the thick of this shit and you're mm-hmm. not gonna feel good about any of it. Uh, I don't know if you guys made note of it too. The they always had a previously on yeah, and the yes. next time on, just like a TV show, and I completely forgot about that because if you didn't play this when it came out it was not released in one package no it was not they released every like an an episode every every month two three four months they they would come out last episode took the longest with like a three month gap right right so it created a situation where you needed that stuff unless you were going to replay all of it but playing all concurrently kind of felt funny because it's just like i just saw that and they always did a good job too of splicing in some of the actual word choices you had yes. two in those. So it, it is neat how it ties into that. Oh, that's what it was. So they gave episode one for PlayStation Plus, and then I just bought the rest as they came out because it was still coming out. Uh, that's how they get yeah, you. So that, when you get back, the coach dies, and then it's just you and this really pimple-faced, whiny teen that I just did not care for. Now, was this canon to the series as well that it didn't matter if you were bitten or not? that no matter how you died, you turned? Yeah, so it wasn't until season two, or the end of season one of the Walking Dead TV show that a geneticist said, it doesn't even matter whether you're bit or not, when you die, you come back. Uh, And then uh, they start to talk about, you know, how long between dying and then coming back. And uh, in the show, he says something ridiculous, like the fastest we've ever seen it happen is like six minutes. But then, um, in the show, something other, some other stuff happens, and it, it's it seems like it's obnoxiously fast. And even in this, and that's the bombshell we get in the in the game is that uh, it's actually everyone's infected, and it's just when you die, you become a zombie, whether it's normal means or bite. Mm-hmm. Right, right. And, and, and that was in the show. And now we get to go to the uh, the other farm, the dairy. Yeah. Well, now, now, okay. Well, oh, yeah, we go to the dairy. The dairy is the next day, you're right? Yeah, well, okay. to give a little bit of story before, everybody's hungry. You're running out of food again, and everybody's just looking for something to eat. And the game actually has you make the choice of who are you going to feed today. And they try and make you feel real bad about your choices because Kenny and Lily are at each other's throats all the time. They're just arguing about food, 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 food. So when this opportunity to go to this dairy farm arises... Uh, they take it. The group takes it. I also it. find it funny that like it's very like uh, I now that I play this, I'm like, and I've played other games like this. I do see the like the mechanics of like whatever you do, insert person will now come and talk to you about what you did. Mm-hmm. And I definitely like I fed these people, and I feel like I did the right choice because of course the kids got fed first, and then people who had said they were hungry. I even gave food to one person, and they were like, no, yeah there are other people and i was like okay perfect you're cool i'm done with you and by the end like i made the choice and even that person who was like yeah that's fine give food to other people and then i gave food to other people that came by and they looked at me and this went and they, they, just for the audio listener they just gave me the stink eye <laughs> and then walked away silently and i was like what the hell yeah i, yeah. I think i gave some of the food to tenny and there was a note that said like everybody noticed they <laughs> gave tenny food yeah 
Uh, just see, I gave it to his wife and kid, and then the, Kenny came up to me. He was like, <laughs> "Alex is huffing and moving around." <laughs> <laughs> no, see, just... I, I gave it to both the kids and uh, Mark and Larry, and then Kenny came up and he was like, "You did the right thing in feeding the kids. That's what a man would do." Yep. Oh, really? Yep. Yeah. Because I did similar, and he, he definitely huffed and puffed at me all pissed off. No. Nope. Well, you probably pissed him off earlier in the game then. Yeah. I mean... What did you do to Kenny? <laughs> uh, to be fair, okay, so... Kenny, by this point in the story, I don't know if you guys got there or got that decision where he makes some comments about your race. I don't. Oh, he's like, so. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah, at some point he's, like, he's just like, I don't know, man. Like Sometimes lock. shit just comes out of my mouth. Yep. Like, you can lock pick, right? <laughs> That's you what it was. People yes. can lock pick, and I was like, <laughs> you're urban. Really? <laughs> yeah. <yes. laughs> I'm from Florida. <laughs> Mm. I think he said. I think he yeah. said the words "urban." And and yes. Like, oh, <laughs> and then Kenny says he's from Florida, and that's where we get the yeah. the whole Florida man thing. Yeah. I, I think Kenny even alludes to having been shot at least once during the course yeah. of this, or stabbed. It was mm-hmm. something ridiculous, and I was like, "Why? How does that come up in conversation at all?" But I'm also like not surprised. He said some things to me that I was just like, mm, "No, mm-mm, we don't. We ain't cool like that." Wait, can he mean you ain't cool like that yet, man? Okay, so the dairy farm. Um, it's a farm. It's surrounded yeah, by an electrical fence. Now, can I also say they keep calling it the dairy, and they kind of reference it as a thing that exists in the world. Mm-hmm. Like, oh yeah, it's a dairy. Is that a thing? Yeah. Like, yeah. like not a dairy farm. They call it a dairy. Well, that's where milk oh, comes from. That. Yeah. Okay. Because at one point, even at the end, he goes, guys, it's not a farm, it's a dairy. And I was like, what? I was very confused. Well, yeah. So who called it before you actually found Mark? Oh, yeah. They they hid Mark a lot, and the the mom constantly, like, mm-hmm. shushing you away. Oh, he's just resting. Oh, I sent him a plate upstairs. <laughs> no, they, they, there's, like... They're like, yeah, of course, yeah, you guys are welcome. We'll so, Alec, what are you talking about? What what Don't are you referencing when you say, uh, um, did anybody hold figure on, out on. about Mark? I want to do an impression here. Okay. Yeah, come in, enjoy. You give. You want some food, you want whatever, we got places to stay. Don't go in the closet. <laughs> <laughs> so it was like that. It was. It was like, yeah, yeah, just don't go snooping around. Like, seriously, don't do it. Like, don't go in that room, though. Seriously, with the padlocks, don't do it. And then, yeah, you're welcome. The hell, man. I mean, right. Before they do the full reveal, I, I just yeah, go ahead and yeah, I want Alec to tell us. Alec, what was going on at the the dairy? So as it turns out, the people that they felt were going to die anyway became dinner. They were practicing cannibalism. Hmm. I, I wouldn't say practicing. I I think they're uh, fully performing cannibalism at this. Point. How many <laughs> bites of human did Duck eat? <laughs> before you stopped everybody from eating <laughs> too much i do i do like where like duck goes what did i eat <laughs> he just is going to He's town on his plate yeah. I, mean, I couldn't help but think of rocky horror picture show rocky gets it rocky doesn't care <laughs> uh the game actively makes you try and stop clementine before eating human meat i got to her i got to her yeah yeah no, yeah. it, it wants you to. It's just that's a like huge thing. It like even does the slow not not necessarily a slowdown like other points, but if you move too slowly through the hallway, then it starts to like give you the red Get hue. Red. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. oh no, you gotta go, man. <laughs> you gotta go right now. I definitely like it was like really like it was one of those like again, this game we didn't even talk too much about the horror aspect, but the game is creepy and tense and stressful. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's that whole interaction but see, at. But seeing, but finding your friend again. What's his name? What, Mark. What his name? Was, Mark. Mark. Finding Mark, and he is legless. Yep. And he's just like help, and I'm like, oh. He's not doing great. You, after you warn them all, and he's just like clawing his way across the hallway. <laughs> oh <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, it's yeah, it's terrible. But they give you little clues that there's something off anyway, because mm-hmm. uh, the the brothers both, yeah. You know, 
their country, but also one of them has a weird <laughs> fixation on his gun. Uh, seemed really gleeful if you killed that uh, sh- Made Mart store employee. employee out in the woods. Did you guys kill him? No, I did not. I made I him do it. I mean, I didn't make him do anything. He did it of his own volition. He was going to do it. I was trying to get it. I was trying to get info out of her. You know? But uh, now I, I found the. I felt like this episode two was pretty strong. Like it, uh, it escalates in the right ways near the end. Uh, you have that point in time when you get trapped in the uh, refrig- refrigerator unit. This yeah. is another turning point in the game. Yeah. So it, yeah, the freezer, the freeze, the walk-in. Freezer. You're trapped there, and Larry goes down again. Larry's having another episode. He stops breathing. Right, now, who did you side with? I sided with Lily. I tried to resuscitate Larry, even oh, though he was too. a dick. Mm-hmm. Yeah, me too. Larry, I did not. I sided <laughs> with Kenny. <laughs> and oh man, because what was the aftermath? Whatever you're doing, Kenny will just smash a because. Sl- because Larry can't, is having heart problems, and he's like, he's already dead, and he's going to be a zombie. So we should probably just smash his head in. And he's like, he's still alive, man. And he's like, nope, let's get rid of him. Salt. And then you're like, hey, maybe we should chill out, you know, Kenny. And Kenny's like, nope, salt, lick, smash the head in. It's like, what? So if you if you t- side with Kenny, you're not doing the action. You're pulling Lily away. While, yes. While Kenny does the damage. Um, man, he... Which Kenny's kind of a... I, he is so crazy. <laughs> well, he's also he's also a hypocrite. Yeah. We'll talk about that later. Yeah. Oh, the salt lick. I forgot about... Uh, uh-huh. So one of the funny pieces of dialogue is that the first time you go in <laughs> to where the cow is, Clem is with uh, Duck and Cat, and they're all just like with the, <laughs> with the cow, and uh, Clem's like, yeah, don't lick that. It tastes funny. And yeah. Lee's like, did you lick it? And there's like this awkward, cute pause. And she's like, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> <laughs> there, there's a lot of great Clem moments. Earlier in the same episode, uh, you're talking to Clem about the chalk. And she says something like, well, Nope, duck- that's in the or, next episode. Or is it in the next episode? Yep. Okay. Yep. Yeah, that's a good one. Okay. All right. We'll bring that up. But we'll bring that up because yeah. I like that bit too. Yeah. I definitely got that. Mm-hmm. I was like, ah, that's good. Yeah. Being a kid. All right. Um, Oh yeah, so that, that then you at the end you like, you know, you kill the family. Did the did, did you kill the family? I only killed one of the brothers. I didn't kill any of them. I didn't kill any of them. No. Yeah. I mean, th- this is one of those smart things where it's like, they have you pinning one of them down, just punching him over and over again. And if you were just playing the game, thinking like, okay, I'm just going to hit until the sequence ends, you kill him. But if you stop partway through, you just get up and walk away. Um, yeah. So and it's, it's tough. Just, Everybody's standing there watching what you're doing. Yep. Yep. There, and, I, and I will tell you, though, there is like, uh, there is the first bit, the first time you like, you like, oh, they give you the option with the brother. And um, with the Vita... If you hit like the home button, it pulls you out of the game and you like swipe to shut down. And so I was like, oh, yeah, okay, here's the brother. And I'm like, these guys have made me mad. And it's like, shoot the brother. And I was like, hell yeah, boom, pop the brother. And as soon as you do that, you hear Clem pop out of the corner. What did you do? Yep. Yeah. Let's swipe. Let's restart. <laughs> I'm not doing that to Clem. I'm not doing that to Clem. Oh, no, no I, lived with, I lived with the consequences of my actions. I, no, I okay. had to have a talk with Clem and mm. talk about how they were bad people, <laughs> but mm-hmm. you should never kill somebody. And I was just so angry. Oh man, you're gonna have to go back on that later in the game. <laughs> you should I'm never sure kill somebody unless yeah. they're bad. Yep. No, not even if they're bad. It's not your spot to kill somebody. Well, we're you did it. We did it. Showed her it's okay. We're doing it anyway because this you're is the Walking model. Dead. All right, you leave the farm, and here's a weird encounter. You're on your way back to the motel, and there is just a car just sitting there a station wagon with a whole bunch of food and supplies in it what do you do nope alex nope, nope. joel no nope. alex nope. nope nobody did it <laughs> all right so they give you the option like 
hey, uh, we're going to take, like, everybody's like, we're taking this food, like, I'm not going to take this food. They even offer Clem a sweatshirt in there, and she she doesn't want it. <laughs> yeah, because you see Clem is like, we shouldn't take this, it doesn't belong to us. Is this going to come back later in the game? Probably. We'll find out. <laughs> Yep. How could your actions be be coordinated between something that happens in episode two to episode five? Well, we'll find out. Yep. Episode three. We're gonna power through episode three before we take a break, guys. Okay. Yep. Sounds good. Woo! Episode three. This is the episode that you should feel bad playing, no matter what. No, yep. <laughs> no matter oh, what you do. Yeah. No matter how you feel. All right, so even accurately named, uh, this episode is called Long Road Ahead, and it is a long road. It's one of those those things where you get halfway through it and you're like, man, I don't want to play anymore. I feel awful about <laughs> everything that happened. So what happens? Which you can actually see that in the Steam achievement summaries too. Of man, this is where people like half Just the people dropped stopped. off. Yep. Why would they do that? Well, let me tell you. Everybody is at at each other's throats still. Um, and one of the things that comes up pretty early in this chapter, after you you raid the uh, um, the pharmacy again, is somebody stealing. Somebody stealing our food, somebody stealing our medicine. It's mostly the medicine. Uh, but who could it be? Who could be doing that? Before you're even able to figure out, because there's this whole scene where you're going through and you're finding all these clues and you're just about to, you know, point the finger and then zombie attack. Well, human, no, attack. human attack. attack. Well, yeah, because the whole attack point is that attack. you find the stash out in the front like a, in a grate. And you find out later that that was a stash that somebody was giving to bandits every so often as a To keep them away. Yeah. Right, yeah. right. And so you're forced to come out. Uh, Lily starts sniping from the side. It turns into chaos. Zombies come. And you all have to pile into the RV and drive off. Yep. You got to get out of there. And here's where it starts to get crazy. <sighs> Duck, he got bit. Yeah, he did. Sure yeah, did. he did. Can you do anything to stop that? Nope. No. <laughs> so, poor Duck. We all know what's going to happen to Duck, right? All yep. right. Kenny yep. is going to protect him and say, hey, he's probably fine. Let's just keep going. Yep. Well, he does. But something even crazier happens. <laughs> you are in the camper, and Lily is just teeing off, like, going off on everybody. Like, you did it. You did, like, accusing every single person mm -hmm. until it comes to you a head. You. Yeah, yeah, you it, run over a walker. Ran over a walker. They did out. Kenny tries to take care of that. It, it comes to a head. And whether or not you chose, who are the two characters? So I had Ben and Carly at that point. Whoever, yep. it, yeah, was, it was between, well, whoever you picked, Carly or the other Doug. one. Doug. Uh, they're the victims. Yep. Yeah, it's, they're, they're there to get killed. Uh, so and that's uh yeah Lily went over the line there. She's yeah. just Man, straight up shoots just... them in the face. Came right out of left field. I was like, did I miss a quick time event somewhere? No. Nope. Ah. <laughs> and also to also to be fair, I was on her side, being like, hey guys, you guys have stopped being. Which one was it, you bastards? Come on, give me give it up. It's one of you did it, and then it was like shoot in the face, and I was like, well, mm, <laughs> that was that ain't what I thought we were gonna do. <sighs> So it then prompts we you. With, like, it prompts you with the choice of you either let her back into the RV or or leave her there. Um, yeah. I left her there. Yep, I did too. I brought her into the RV. Now my, it's been a while, but my understanding is if you bring her into the RV later on, she steals the RV from you. Yep, when you guys find the train. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. She's, she's like held up in there, and I had to go back in there to grab something. And as I was like in there looking through it, she's just like. I'm stealing the RV, and he, uh, you can come with me, or you can go, but I'm stealing it. And you're like, that's not cool. Don't do that. And then she just shoves you out of the RV. All right. So uh, <laughs> Lily's gone. That's what happened to me. Uh, your your, your Carly or Doug is dead, whoever you had. Duck is bit, but you found a train. 
So let's rewind a little bit Just because little we bit. talked, we pulled it up uh, earlier. This is where your hand is forced to tell everybody about your past. Yeah. Okay. You you can drop that bomb on everybody. <clears throat> yeah. The and uh, Lily lets it out after she shoots your Carly Doug. And so, who all did you tell that you were a murderer? Everybody. Well, uh, Car- Carly knew because she confronts you with it and says, I won't tell you in, in number one or two. Uh, right. I, I didn't tell anybody. Uh, Lily outed me, and Kenny was not happy. <laughs> I okay. I told everybody but Kenny because me and him were on the outs, and she, he killed uh, Lily's dad, Larry. I told everyone. Yeah. Okay. I told everybody but Kenny because I was like, Kenny, you, you know, me and you ain't vibing anymore. Right now, you 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 you've done some stuff, enough stuff that I'm kind of like I'm I'm mad at you. And then he was like, and then it came to the head that like, well, he's he was a murderer, and everyone was like, oh yeah, that's fine. <laughs> and then just Kenny came up to me and goes, you didn't tell me. <laughs> no, Florida man. We, we, we ain't cool right now, man. Florida man. Good old Florida. You, man. you really right cross now. him once, he'll never forgive you. No, he won't. That's what I'm yeah. saying. That's what I'm saying, and I was again. I was a little mad. I was a little mad because of what he did. I told him to chill out on Larry, and he did not chill out on Larry. Yep. Not okay. Uh, before I forget, the chalk thing. You want to mm-hmm. jump back into that, Joel? Yeah, sure. Yeah, the club, the club thing. So, yeah. so they're having you do an investigation about what happened to the the drugs and you go over to clementine because there's a chalk mark and she's the only one playing with chalk and you're having a conversation with her and she talks about how well and that's always blaming me for stuff and uh he, he even said that i put a a bug in his pillow and did you <laughs> yes. yeah <laughs> yeah like she's like they shouldn't even say it like normal yeah she does it kind of devilish yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah, mischievous. It was really... She, she is the heart of this, clearly, but she also has some of the, the sweetest kind of humor, too. Just that kind of innocent stuff. It's really yeah. a chapter three where she starts to come out of her shell, and then after that, it just gets more and more uh, with Clem. Hmm. But, like, really, when you start out, it's still a, such an awkward interaction that you have this girl with you and... You're just like, yep, I'm gonna take you to your family, um, but we're back at the train, so you gotta you gotta get the train going. A bunch more puzzles here before you finally get it moving. Uh, it once you get it moving, uh, well, hold on. There's a nice hobo that joins your adventuring party at this point. Uh, Charlie, just randomly, random Chuck. Hobo. Chuck or Charlie, if you're fancy like that. <laughs> Chuck J. Hobo. I love that he was like, yeah, I was going to scare you shitless, but... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I really like this guy. He, he makes his own fun. Yeah. yeah. There was a couple There was a couple of bits where like, like later on he goes, I got a problem with drinking. And you're like, oh, cool. And he's like, got any booze? And I'm like, no. <laughs> and, like, All right. and then like later on, one of the puzzles, it's like, oh, I need to get this map and Kenny won't move. The only way to do it is to give Chuck the booze. Yep. And I just feel awful. Hey, you want a drink? <laughs> yeah, and then like, uh, Kenny's like, Kenny, uh, hey, Kenny, that guy's got booze. And Kenny's like, I'm going to do some booze. And I'm like, okay. Well, why does Kenny need some booze, Alex? Well, at a, well they we're fixing the train. After we fix no, the train. We're moving. After we fix the train. We're going. We stopped the train because Duck has really taken a turn and it is time so one suggestion is katya says we're going to take him out to the woods and we should take care of him so he doesn't suffer anymore and while you're talking to clam and you're going to go follow them into the woods to like help out uh Kat- you hear a gunshot and it's katya who uh has shot herself yep and oh then either you have to take care of duck or you have to tell Kenny to take care of Duck. And Kenny has now lost everything. 
couldn't have happened to a nice So you started out this chapter with, <laughs> wow. what, we're like eight people? Brutal, right? That was way too brutal. I apologize. We're, we started out this chapter with a full party of people, and then we lost the mother, the son, two of the people from the that were introduced in the first episode, and now you're left with Kenny, Clem, a hobo, we're just teen. just randomly pe- teen. and the teen. Of course, Lee is still there, but geez, now you it was just cut right in half. Who did now? What did you guys think? Like, who did you, did you guys take care of Duck or did Kenny take care of Duck? I, I took care of it. I offered to. I haven't actually gotten. This is where I just got to. Okay. okay. All right, Alex. Yeah. Spoilers. I don't know. <laughs> the, you want to take off your headphones, Alec? <laughs> no. Walk away. Uh, I, obviously, on its face, it's really <laughs> tough, but the slow crawl of denial of Kenny throughout this entire experience, Katja sort of slowly coming to terms through this whole time that like he's not going to recover, and we're just delaying the inevitable, and them going off. I mean, but she was she's always been the kind of person of reason, and Kenny's been the one out of control. Yeah, there was there was one decision that they give you where. Uh, she asks you flat out, like, what happened in the freezer with Larry, Lily's dad? And you can make that choice. Of, and I told her, and she's like, damn it. Like, <laughs> like, come on, Kenny. What are you doing? So she had kind of been, like, even the, later on, like, after that, he goes, yeah, we're just fighting a lot right now. It's like, so I think Katya and him... They were not seeing eye to eye for a bit. Well, she doesn't I, like the idea of carrying a gun, and then yep. well, they, yeah. Also, I, Kenny's just been making some real, cho- like, real specific. Kenny's choices. out of his mind. He's he's yeah. so crazy. Yeah. I I didn't take that read, but uh, yeah. Either way, it's it's a very painful sequence, and uh, you know, between the death of a child and anything, uh, the idea of a woman who has felt like so hopeless or down that she has to end her life just she's lost all hope and then you've got kenny who is now a florida man untethered uh yeah painful all around tough stuff no just like the the katya part i was like you know having a having a like a new child i'm just like you know what i that's upsetting but i i get it i get it that's hard that's that seems impossible. So just like yeah, that's that's upsetting. But Kenny is determined to keep moving on, despite a uh, lack of hope there. Mm-hmm. And uh, we get swarmed by a by a horde of zombies as we're dealing with all of this and trying to get the train back a moving. Uh, and then we go to town. Nope, we don't make it to town yet. Introducing two new characters. So you come to a stop because there is a tanker, like a an oil tanker, a gasoline tanker. It's a tanker truck, whatever you want to call it. I just these characters became so forgettable to me. And it, I just was like, I don't even remember what they were. Well, this thing is hanging off the side of a bridge, and you can't get the tr- the train around it. So you got to try and find a way to dislodge it. So uh, introduce Omid and Chris Krista. Yeah, Krista. Yeah. Uh, to uh, your people, and one of the first options that it gives you when you meet them, as Lee is, uh, and I took this option, like, man, it's been a hell of a day. <laughs> like, yeah. he's, he's like, they see the guy down there, like, he just buried his wife and son, like, ugh. And, the- and they're like, <laughs> when did that happen? He's like, what time is it? Four <laughs> o'clock, like, two hours ago. And I was like, oh my yeah. god. And just yeah. dump it on him. <laughs> yeah. I thought that was so brutal. He's like, when did, oh man, when was that? What time is it? <laughs> just, just so, so brutal. So brutal. It's so hard. All of the choices that it makes you go through. Um, so then there's a couple of puzzles here so that you can get the, the tanker dislodged the tanker the and get it moving again. But again, just like a horde of zombies is now following the train because they're attracted to noise. Uh, there's a couple of choices near the end of this chapter that, you know, they, you're they do the thing. A, they're on, you're on top of a bridge. Yeah. And, and the train's going by and you and, uh, Omid. Omid. 
yeah. uh, end up having to jump. You you have the choice of pushing him off or not. <laughs> I did oh, not. Oh, really? I did not. I jumped and said basically suit yourself, and then he jumps. Yeah, that's. Then he is. jumps too late and tumbles off the side of the train. Yeah. I think he messes tumbles either way. Save? Yeah, he he does, but it, it's it's still very funny to see because he just he just crumples on the ground. His life is all what messed up. From that? There, her and him are running towards the the train, uh, and. You choose which one you grab first, and whoever you choose says, "Why did you pick me?" Pick yep. me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they they both end up surviving that sequence, as far as I know. But I ch- I chose him because he had a hurt leg. No, I chose her. And I thought that, <laughs> and I thought, but I did also like you choose him, and he goes, "Why did you choose yep. me?" She's a girl. Yeah. I was like, what? <laughs> she's a girl, and she's hiding something that you won't find out about until later. Absolutely. But yeah, that's more or less where it ends, though, right? Them heading towards Savannah? Yep, yeah. you're on your way to Savannah. Here. Oh, uh, this is... It's, at some point during this chapter, you do find out that Clem is talking to somebody on her walkie-talkie. Yep. Yeah. I think it's towards the end of this Ooh, chapter. That's the, no, that's the cliffhanger episode. That's the cliffhanger of it. The... Spo- the Oh, uh, the last thing, the stinger, before it's like, oh, okay, now the episode. Yeah, he's started. like, come to Savannah, I'm here with your parents. And it's like, <gasps> okay, so we're going to take a quick break here, and we'll be back to wrap up Telltale's The Walking Dead Season 1. <laughs> We're back. We're back with more The Walking Dead, Season 1 from Telltale. We have arrived finally to Savannah, and Kenny's big plan is to get a boat and sail away. Come sail away. Nope, can't afford that. Uh, let's see. Let's I see. do think that we should, we should talk about the fact that, like, at least just for a second, mm-hmm. uh, we do prep... Clem teaching her how to shoot, uh, cutting her hair, right? That's where we kind of got back to like a little bit at the end. Of that the was end of Ep 3, episode. but yeah, it's yeah. a nice little quiet moment of character interaction. Make, and Make a plan with her so she feels more comfortable and ready to like do what we need to do, you know? Help her grow up in this world, right? Yep. Cut the hair so that people can't grab it, and then shooting. Oh, it's always important to... To shoot a walker in the head. Or a human, you just shoot him anywhere. Words from Lee. So, arriving in Savannah, it is kind of crazy. Uh, It's a major city, so it's in complete disarray. One of the first things that happens is a bell rings in in the distance. And... uh, What you notice at that point is that the walkers are all very directed towards that bell. Uh, The voice on the radio comes and tells you, like, hey, I wouldn't be on the streets after that bell rings because they all start walking that way. Hence, walkers. And and they hold themselves up into a a house nearby there. Um, They did in the backyard need to find a place in apparently the only way to get in is a doggy door a dog that's recently been buried gets dug up and used to open the door and and get them inside um Mm -hmm. or at least that's the way i did it did you guys do it differently (laughs) that's the only way in okay okay oh okay so okay alec was giving a look and i was just like wait no maybe he didn't have a choice but you haven't played that far (laughs) I have not. I, it's uh, it was a look of ooh. Yeah, that's one of the more gruesome parts because the dog is not quite skeletal. There's still some stuff on the bones, so it's, it's a meat oh. up, meat yeah, up. it's yeah. real gross. Uh, I mean, if you guys have gotten killed, they really quickly like 
It's like, oh, zombie bites you. And it's like, oh, okay, I mean, you know, that's kind of gruesome. And then it's like, no, they just go for the stomach and just start ripping out intestines. And it's like, oh. Yeah, yeah. But uh, you're there, hold up. Omid is in bad shape because he his leg is possibly infected. Mm-hmm. Uh, you're all sort of sorting around trying to look for stuff. You find out that Kenny's missing, and you find him in the attic where uh-huh. there is a young child, a young boy who had turned into a walker uh, and was emaciated. So the idea the being that he probably started, uh, started there as a kid and then turned into a walker. Kenny is obviously struggling because it's a young boy that turned into one. He kind of looks like Duck. Oh. A little bit, yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. And he's having a little bit of trouble reconciling that. Yep. So then you're left with the choice. What do you do? Do you just leave? Or do you kill the the walker? Or does Kenny kill the walker? What'd you guys do? You, I, I, Joel? I killed it, and we buried it in the backyard. Yes, I that's what I Okay. <laughs> yeah. I, I was trying to think. I was like, what did what I did do? What did I do? <laughs> uh, what and did that's, I do? That's important because it comes back later. Yeah. So not not just yet. Uh, but one of the things that you need to do, you really need to get down. Kenny's like, we got to get down to the shoreline. We have to, like, right now. Let's go. Come on, guys. We're going. So what do you do? <laughs> you go, go down you go to the shore. The, you go down to the shore. <laughs> yeah. you go down the shore. <laughs> and you find uh, some real wacky stuff when you get down to the shore. But what, what don't you find? Boats. A working Boats. boat. <laughs> there's, <laughs> there's like some... Uh, Cap, not quite capsized. capsized. Mess. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's half broken into. And... But I definitely thought about this for a second where I was like, we've been doing this for a while. We've been going from town to town. We are not the first people with this idea. This is not a unique idea. Well, somebody points that out, too. They're like, what are you, yeah. crazy? Like, anybody with half a brain probably jumped on their boat. Uh, yeah, so there's no boats. But what you do find is... Uh, a wall of dead walkers and yeah, just... some that are strung up on pikes. <laughs> Fantastic. It's art. It's art. It's art, really. It's something, all right. Yeah. Um, for a, a series that has a lot of really shocking moments, that was a really striking scene. Uh, it, it wasn't like really anything else you've seen in this <laughs> game so far. Well, because yeah. if you don't go all the way down to the end and you just walk into the alley that's next to the newspaper stand, you hear like the... Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, it's probably some on the other side of this barrier. Nope. You walk it, back and there's just corpses, the piles of corpses there. It is uh, the barrier. Yep. And this is, yep. this is where they introduce Molly. And Molly has been surviving in the city by running around, ringing a bell, and then running in the opposite direction. So that she can scavenge. Using some sort of like climbers pick or something like that yeah. to yeah. to repel around. Yeah, she, I like her character. She, she's spunky, no nonsense. Uh, it is confrontational to a degree where it's not annoying. All around good stuff. Which again, this, the, I felt like there wasn't a lot of new characters I loved. After the initial group at the pharmacy, I was like, I don't... Any new character, I've been kind of very like, eh, I don't like you. Yeah. But she was the first one. I was like, okay, yeah, I'm on board with her. Right. Oh, right. for sure. She's She knows how to handle herself, and she's got a backstory. Hers comes out quite prevalently. When you make it to the city that is surrounded by the undead <laughs> wall. Uh, so Crawford, she talks to you about Crawford, and Crawford is the last city Uh, There's a lot of people there, but the weird thing about the city is that they kick out all of the children and they kick out all of the elderly and the terminal because they don't want anybody dying and then turn it into a zombie. Right. But before you can escape back to the mansion, uh, the zombies start to get a, you know, keen on your position because Molly rang that bell. And then there were, there was a gunshot that also drew them over. Uh, and the only way for Lee to escape, because Clem and Kenny escape, uh, I think it's just, Molly. Yeah, yeah, just uh, up uh, the, like the staircase next to a tall building. Yeah, up an thing. escape ladder. 
Yeah. So they take that route. You got to go into the sewers. My favorite place to eat. Yeah. I don't like the sewers, well, but, no. you know. More strain of puzzles. You find a secret passageway to a hideout where a bunch of elderly and terminal people are mm-hmm. living. Uh, they want to kill you real bad. Like, they they really want to kill you. It's just the doctor that's like, hold off. But only if you say the right thing. Because if you say the wrong thing, he'll he'll shoot you still. But Yeah, that, I went through that and yeah, I got shot at least yeah. once. Yeah. But yeah. basically, uh, you tell your situation. Uh, he guides you back to the house. Since he's a doctor, he agrees to take a look at Omid. Um, this is also at the time where... Was this around the time where they got into the shed and found out there was a boat there? No, that's when you you make it back. Yeah. So okay. once you make it back to... Okay, yeah, I see what you're saying. So when you make it back to the mansion, you're looking everywhere uh, for Clem. But I was trying to find the doctor's name because he... Vernon. So Vernon, he's going to take care of Omid, and that's why he comes back with you. Uh, but you're looking everywhere for Clementine, looking everywhere, and then it turns out that she made her way into the garage, and yes. that's where the boat is. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. There's a boat there, fully functioning. The only problem is that the battery's dead, it needs gas, and I think that's it uh, yep. for the boat itself. But uh, More stuff for you to find in a checklist situation. Right. It, it's that, and then looking for medicine for Vernon's team as well as Omid's infection. When they go to Crawford. Yeah. All right. So uh, before we get to Crawford, one of the things that we kind of skipped over is that when you're on the train, Ben tells you that, hey, it was me that had the deal going with the bandits. So I'm directly responsible for killing everybody. <laughs> I knew <laughs> and you're it. Like, I you're knew like, it. You're like, oh, man. I knew it. Oh, God. I didn't know. Come it, on, bro. But oh. I was very mad at that. Oh, he's he's a dumb kid. He he's he was a dumb wim- kid. He was whimpering real bad with that whole confrontation too when it was being argued about. And, and he he is a little wimp, but when he feels like he's right, you start hearing the backbone in his voice a bit. So a he take care of himself when he's feeling powerful. But yeah. there's a couple of times when he's just absolutely useless. But it made me real mad. Like, what is your problem? Carly man? knew how to shoot. And then she he died. Wants, and then he wants to tell Kenny. It's like, no. No, don't, don't tell don't Kenny. Do that. He's going to be so mad. You know, it's weird that you guys found out then. I found out back in the train. Yeah, that, that's why I, I said back. I'm yeah. back on, we jumped oh, ahead. Okay, I didn't know. But yeah, oh, back okay. on the train, he said. But this is where it starts to come out. So you make it to Crawford with your checklist of we need to get this, this, and this. So utilizing the sewer system, you make it in there uh, with your new party, including Vernon and Molly. Uh, Puzzle, puzzle, puzzle. (laughs) Basically, the next story beat is when you get to the pharmacy, right? Or or the doctor's office. The doctor's office, office. yeah. Yeah, Yeah, Yeah. because there there, you find tapes uh, that are showing, like, patient tapes because everything's required to be recorded, I guess, here. And it's of a woman who found out she's pregnant. The doctor is telling her, basically, she has to either abort the child or leave. Says, I'll give you 24 hours. Second tape shows that she shows back up. Uh, instead of agreeing to do it, she stabs the doctor mm-hmm. and runs out. Weird. And that shows Not you just... that, presumably, like, Crawford had been overrun with walkers when you came there and found out and you find out like that's probably what caused them to tumble and, and be overturned by walkers yep. is, is that so the town the town yeah oh yeah or right. the base or the hideout whatever you want to call it the whole like, town yeah and that's uh and that's and the, is that that's what's her name right no no there's a separate yeah. tape that you can find and you can watch that has molly on it and molly has a agreement with the doctor uh, for medicine and supplies, and I won't tell you what she's doing with the doctor, but it is. Uh... Yep. So that is why she completely pummeled that. <laughs> yeah. So she <laughs> dips out at one point after you get the battery. She's like, "I need to go take care of some stuff." And the next time you see her, she's like, just 
go into town with the pickaxe on one of the zombies yeah. and it's the zombie doctor so uh yeah oh okay. he uh yeah stuff stuff uh transpired adult situations adult God, situations okay. alex <laughs> I need an adult. Mm -hmm. So you get your medicine for Omid, you get your gasoline that Kenny takes care of, uh, and then you get your battery that you and Molly take care of, and then uh, I believe this is on your way out, that one of the other people that came with you, that the that Vernon had brought, she goes down. Uh, but it it's because you're overrun again. And yeah, you know, ben, ben did Ben things and ben pulled did. the <laughs> the hatchet. Oh, no, pulled a hatchet, a hatchet out of a yeah. door that was keeping it closed from walkers. Ben is the worst. He's Bloody okay. Ben. But the really funny part is that the door that's marked Armory is just like a bell tower, and there's nothing in it. <laughs> <laughs> so you finally break. Is it one of the things is that Ben's been trying to break into the Armory for forever, and he can't get in there. Uh, you eventually get in, but there's nothing there, uh, and then you have to make your quick escape this out is all, of. This is also where Ben can't help but spill the beans. Yep. About what he did to at the him. worst possible time. He's like Kenny. Yeah, I killed like everyone. Time, <laughs> You're welcome. Your entire you. I have unburdened you of family. Yep. But yeah, they're escaping out this bell tower. They start by going down, then they start going up. Lee gets sort of separated a bit by them, but he's shooting his way through. Uh, they get toward the top, and they're all climbing out of a staircase, and Ben sort of falls. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. and you grab his hand, and he's telling you, like, let me go. <laughs> like, I, I want to die, basically. And then you get to choose about whether you let him go or pull him up and save him. Yeah. Yep. What, what did you guys do? I saved him. Yeah, I saved him. I felt bad for him. He's he's just trying to make his way. Not well, but... <laughs> no, not well at all. No. It, it wasn't a Lily situation. No. Yeah. Like, that was just straight up murder. Yeah. Right? This yeah. was a series of unfortunate events that led to... How did you put it, Alex? B freeing kenny of the burden of having a family <laughs> burden of family right yeah I, wow man i didn't even think of it like that but this that's real messed up but they uh they find a way back they administer the drugs to to omid uh vernon does leaves to go back to his uh crew yeah and then you fall asleep next to clem uh, but at this point, you have already separated her from the walkie-talkie because of this guy that's been talking to her. Mm -hmm. um, but when you come back awake, she's nowhere to be seen. So you go looking for her. And this is where the game does it. You go outside. You're looking for, for Clem. You find her hat. Mm -hmm. You go reach for her hat. Bam! Walker jumps out and bites you. Perfect. You are bitten. You have limited amount of time to survive. And this episode concludes with the rest of the team walking up to you. Yes. And then you get to decide whether or not you want to tell them that you're bitten. You tell them what happened to Clem, but you get to make a choice here about whether or not you want to reveal that. Yep. Which Clem is, is gone... She is with uh, the, the, the voice. mysterious she's, voice. She's been abducted. All of you, for some reason, assume that Vernon... Well, not assume. Uh, you think Vernon did it because Vernon, before he left, said, like, take Clem to us. Let us take care of Clem. We've all been parents. We can take better care of her than you can. And, of course, yeah. you refuse, but... Yep. So, uh, yeah, yeah. What'd you guys do? Did you reveal your bite? I did. I did. So we all did. Fantastic. <laughs> no, that's good. I, I, that's the why we play these games. Mm hmm To see what decisions, and, you know, sometimes we're all going to align. Sometimes we're going to be like, nah, man, you did it wrong. And episode five is just a roller coaster. Like, it, it's just yeah. almost all action throughout this entire thing. Um, episode five just goes. Yep. 
It so, starts out with you all going to the Vernon's hideout because you think that he's the one. I, I guess I should... Let's step back for a second because one thing we mentioned is like at the end of chapter four, they've got that splash screen of these are the people that decided to join you mm -hmm. in your mission to go save Clem. And it could be just you all the way up to everybody that's in the group agrees to go with you. Um, I doubt everybody except Kenny because I made the mistake of telling him she, he shouldn't smash Lily's head into the ground with a salt lick. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. But the funny thing is, like, Kenny is such a pivotal character that, in spite of that, he ends up showing back up throughout this uh, sequence here. But yeah, yeah. Basically, you end up going to the hideout. They're all gone. Uh, Lee sort of faints, and they're trying to get you back up and going. Uh, at some point, was it the first or second time they fainted they they put you up on top of the surgical table mm -hmm. and krista is on the verge of cutting off your arm where you got bit so this will differ yeah, they that based that on who comes with you so when you're saying like these are the people that came with you i had the same group joel mm -hmm. alex did you have the yeah, same so same. we all had the same so krista was the one who i asked to cut off my arm did you keep it or did you lose it I lopped it off. Um, I, I've played it both ways, but, uh, you know, in, in the moment, it's like, okay, I can see the logic. If Maybe if you cut off the arm and, and you stem it from entering the bloodstream far enough, maybe you can live. Uh, Lee told him to do it, but it's clear in his mind that he's just buying extra time, not so much thinking he's going to be able to spare himself. Uh, and he, mm -hmm. he's very one track through this whole thing of just like, I don't care what happens to me. I just need to go rescue Clem and, and make sure she's safe. So, uh, yeah, I, I took the, yeah, slice me up and put a tourniquet around my arm and hope I don't bleed out path. Alex? I, the first time I played this way back when I definitely cut off the arm, uh, at the same time, there was an old comic series I liked – I can't remember what it was called, but it was in the DC universe of Batman and Superman. There was an old hitman who wasn't very good at the job. And the comic was just about him and how he was in the world while Batman and Superman were around. And there was one scene where he gets bitten by a zombie and they chop off his arm. And later on they find a cure and he's like, Oh great. Can you cure me? And they're like, yeah, sure, because you definitely could have died. And they're like, but I chopped off my arm. And he goes, that's not a thing. <laughs> like, that's not a real thing. You're just, that's just a well, movie thing. You're not, that's, that's dumb. You lost an arm for no That's reason. the thing. And that's what I was thinking. I playing it this time. I was like, no, that's a dumb thing. No, I'm not losing an arm for no reason. So I did it the first time. I'm not doing it again. At the point when this was out, the Herschel in the Walking Dead TV show during season two, you cut off his leg and he survives and he is fine. So mm, I don't know okay. if they were trying to trick people into that. into following that logic, but it is, you know, it's out there in the in the that canon time, material. That timing probably would play a part into the decision making of it. Yeah. Yep. Uh, okay. So sense. you got an arm. You don't got an arm. But what you do find out is that Clem is not. In the, uh, what was it, morgue? Yeah, they were stationed up in a morgue. They've completely cleared out. And uh, where did they go? Well, you have to head back. And what you find out <laughs> is that all they those old, the, the old infirm <laughs> yeah. and terminal people stole the boat. Be it's beat gone. A floor, beat a Florida man and stole the boat. <laughs> brutal. So brutal. Well, Kenny... Come on, man. Oh, okay, again, referencing old stuff. You know, despite what the news say, old people can serve a purpose. Stealing your daughter? You just, I trusted a helpless old lady and a rascal, <laughs> and she robbed me blind. Oh. Here's your first problem. Rascal scooters. Yep. These things are expensive. All right. <clears throat> Don't trust the elderly. Don't trust the elderly. Um, yeah, so you are now faced with, like, the 
Well, what do I do? Where do I go? Yeah, but no. don't you get chased by walkers and forced to go up oh, the that's house right. again? No, yeah, you're I, right. Yeah, yeah. You, you're forced to go back up to the house. You do like a final stand in the second floor where you barricade with a desk and you unload all your clips into these zombies. They're still coming, and you go back up to. The, it's all action. Yep. Baby. And you go, you go back up to the attic where that uh, walker was, the kid, and you're stuck there. And, then and if you're you. Stuck trying, yeah. If you had left it there, then it's a unpleasant surprise for everybody, but <laughs> yeah. all of us took care of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm. But you're basically there, like, Kenny's trying to talk about, like, how do we deal with Lee? And they're sort of going back and forth, but find out that the wall adjacent to the house next to it is this thin, like, plaster wall with nothing really yep. separating it. One so of like, my favorite lines in the whole thing. Alex, what does he say when he hits it with the coat rack? Oh, I don't remember. What really? Yeah. All right, I call immunity before I say it. <laughs> he says, this wall ain't shit. <laughs> and then proceeds to just hit it with the coat rack. <laughs> yeah. I thought it was so yeah, funny. Really like, bad. man, this wall isn't anything. And it's it's a mansion, so it's kind of crazy that this mansion has just... No, I mean it's all about looks, man. It's more about looks and actual functionality. And form. The rest of the place seemed like it was holding up pretty well compared to some of the places you went. So, yeah, don't don't overthink it. Yeah, <laughs> but but yeah. you escape, and most of this episode from there is your team just trying to propel you along. The end goal is to go to the hotel, yep, where Clementine's family always stays at, and she brings it up at some point, or it was brought. Yeah. No, well, she brought it up a couple of times. At the beginning, yeah. she's like, they're in Savannah, and then you find out that it's the Marsh House, and then uh, you uh, hear her on the walkie at one point, and she says, I'm at where my parents were. So you mm -hmm. come to the conclusion, I got to go to the Marsh House. Yeah. So, so a lot of it's just going over different uh, rooftops, trying to go across. You did a lot of... Uh, moving ladders or walking over unsturdy platforms and things. And then there's a point where you're all crossing, and then Ben takes a tumble. Mm hmm. A real Good. bad tumble. Uh, lands Good. from the ceiling onto the ground. Uh, Kenny and you race down to try to help him. Kenny gets there first, realized he really not only messed up his leg, but he has been impaled, prodded, impaled by like a metal grater pipe or something like that. Uh, yeah. Kenny tells you to leave because he he's just trying to like pull him up and can't get him out of it, and tells him to leave. Tells you basically, I'm not going to leave Ben alone again because he felt bad earlier when he realizes what he's gone through, and that's the last you see of Kenny too, uh, down there. So, uh, that's the bye, Florida man. So then you're left with uh, Krista and Omid. You go over more obstacles. Uh, you are nearby the hotel and walking across like a banister with oh. the name of the town. Yep. It, it tumbles. You're sort of left hanging onto one side. You tell Omid and uh, Krista, like, go on without me. Find a space for us to meet up with you. And you drop down onto the main level. So you went first? Yeah. I, went first. I did not. I let them go first. And they both successfully made it across. Okay. And then it broke. And I was like, well, now I'm just going to do the thing. <laughs> and Lee just jumps off the building and starts hacking his way through zombies. Mm-hmm. Oh. Yeah. You got him, man. So badass. Like a, like but, a badass but, but it's yeah. also an interesting thing because through this whole sequence, they're not really, like, honing in on him and chasing him down. No, they're not at just stumbling point. around. So it's already giving the impression of like he's turning and they're starting to recognize yeah. him less they as a human yeah. than they had before. So it's, it's he's one yeah. of them. Yeah. So it, it is this very cool cinematic sequence though cuz it's a slow walk, you're just chopping them up side to side and then you get to the hotel uh, where you then walk up, find the room and, and enter the room where you think Clem is at. Mm-hmm. And here's where 
all of the decisions that you made up until this point come into play. So, who who is the man that has abducted Clementine? Well, remember back in Chapter 2 when you decided to raid that station wagon? That's the guy! <laughs> <laughs> yep. Oh boy, so if you decided uh-huh. to take any of that food, he's pretty upset. But because your party took the food, he's still pretty upset. And he definitely has been following you. Mm-hmm. And he's been getting updates from Clem, who, unbeknownst to her, is this psychopath uh, who has a bag with him. What's in the bag, Joel? What's, <laughs> What's in, the, in bag? the box? What's in the box? What's in the bag? <laughs> His wife's head. Yep. Because uh, uh, she couldn't forgive him for how they lost... Their, their son. son and so yep. yeah and then they said se- she separated with their daughter and then they both ended up dead so what did you um, say they made it 10 feet out yeah of the hotel and that was it yeah so th- this whole sequence it- it's really strange because it's almost kind of quiet he puts you up at gunpoint makes you sit down and have like a conversation separated by two chairs and a gunpoint and you're having this conversation, Ellie. Uh, Ellie. Um, Somebody's Clem, been playing The Last of Us, huh? Not as recently as you would think. Uh, Clem. Clem is stuck in the bathroom, and she sort of sneaks her way out, finds her way out. Oh, so cool! And and you just like look up, and yeah. she's yeah, there. Y- yep. And then your cursor points to stuff on a table. I think one's like a candlestick, and there's like a hatchet, and you select it, and all it does is showing showing Lee just to like move his eyes over and go like that <laughs> to, to her so, and so you're seeing so her good. slowly walk up behind him hatchets him in the arm and then it's just this very visceral I wouldn't call it a fight you run up towards him and basically choke him out right you don't yeah. have to okay, I did not what did you do so uh, I eased off at one point and then uh, we still got into a scuffle but Clem killed him Oh, okay. Shot him in the gut. All right. All right. So you can do it. You can strangle the guy to death. Yeah, I just didn't want Clem to do it. Yeah. Well, Alex, she's going to have to make a decision <laughs> at some point. Let me tell yes, you about have, the end of this game. To. Because we so, are close to the end. Yeah, this stuff winnows down quickly. So the Lee somehow finds out that if you are covered in zombie gunk, gunk guts, whatever... Other zombies won't notice you as a person. They'll just take you as another they zombie. They did this in the yep. show. So they he basically shows. wipes her all up with guts from a zombie they killed earlier. They then... St- the episode was called Guts. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> they, they're stumbling through the streets, telling her basically just like, just just walk, don't look. She looks and sees her parents. Yep. As, as a couple Ooh. of the zombies. And as that happens, you pass out. And then you wake up inside of... Like a pol- not a police station, but like a security guard station kind it of thing. It is a jewelry store, I believe, oh. and there's a guard yeah. at the back who's chained up, or right. he's he's stuck. He's not chained. Yeah, yeah, but but you're stuck. She took you there. This is also where you basically lay it out to her of what's happening, and, and that you're not going to make it. And you give her sort of step by step instructions of what to do about how to get out of there and how to deal with the zombie. Um, tell her to uh, chain yourself up to the, the heater. I think mm-hmm. that was there. Yep. And right it's a, you know, it's a very tender, sad situation. You get to see her sort of have that mature moment where she takes care of the zombie. I mean, the zombie attacks her, but she still finds a way to get out because you kick something toward her. I think a bat which causes something to knock down and, and kill the zombie. But th- this is where you also get to tell her, like, give her advice of what to do, uh, tell her whether or not you want her to shoot you so you don't turn into a walker. Mm-hmm. Uh, I told her not to because she would need to keep the bullet. But... I said, I told her, um, 
I didn't want to turn to a zombie, so I said, hey. Yep, go. me too. It was yeah. not an easy choice. No, it's nope. it's not. You know, and that's that's what's so effective about this game is that you fostered this relationship up to this point where you probably should have seen it coming with this kind of story, but you get shocked when Lee actually gets bit, and then it turns into all of this relationship building just sort of splintering because of it happening at the end, and then you've got this little girl that's now left all alone <laughs> having to fend for herself. And yeah. uh, that, that that's more or less where the story, main story ends, right? Yep. Yeah. yeah. There is a post credit scene where it shows Clem out in, like, the countryside, sitting there kind of trying to figure out what to do. And then she sees two people walking out in the distance. And mm-hmm. then they stop and turn at her, and, like, she freaks out, and that's where it ends. Um, but, but, yeah. That's, uh... That's, that's the Walking Dead. That's the game. I, I yep. guess one question I have for y'all, uh, obviously not Alec, but did either of you play season two or anything beyond this? I did not. I played the first episode of season two, and it was as unforgiving, uh, probably more unforgiving than this. You have to make a life or death decision, maybe five minutes into it. Yep. And oh. you don't even know either of these people you're just getting to know them and it's like all right pick which one dies like no the the entirety of season two is oppressive yeah and it, i think if you can handle that it, it's an interesting story and continuation but um i didn't get the same sense of that kind of parent child bond so you have you have to be willing to forego that a little bit and understand you're not going to get that some kind of familial but- there was more stealth I mean, I think that involved part, in it I think too. That part of it is that you're, but I think part of it is that you're playing, you're playing as Clem, who is technically like a, you've spent a whole season of like being your child. So to me, it's still like play, even just playing as her is a prote- is a protective. You know, you still have a protective nature over her as a character. As you, not not as her, mm-hmm. but yeah. No, I'm saying is yeah, is you. You're playing the game and you're like, man, I just really want to protect Alex. This character, quit being so meta. Really bad to happen. <laughs> I know you can't help it. Yeah, I can't help it. Guys, uh, I don't want to. I think we covered everything that we needed to. If we forgot uh, anything, do it now. More about Joel. What did you think about revisiting this? Oh, uh, it had been long enough to where I forgot some of the choices you had to make. I forgot about uh, Kenny offing somebody with a cinder block. I mean, it, it's the the stuff. If you wait long enough, it gets shocking again. And even knowing the general thrust of the story, the writing's pretty solid here. Uh, The acting is very good. Uh, Somebody who wrote this wrote a Star Wars. So, I mean, (laughs) take that for what you will. Um, This is the kind of game I wouldn't hate seeing some sort of remaster of. I wouldn't want much change in the way of the performances. In fact, keep those. But graphically and performance-wise, it it struggled a little bit. And it's not so much the Vita problem as much as it's the the character models sort of like awkwardly moving or looking a little rigid or wooden instead of naturally moving. That'd probably help a little bit. The audio mixing for Xbox was terrible. I had to tinker with the sound settings quite a bit to get it to be evened out. But yeah, I mean, I didn't have any issues with the sound settings. There were a couple of visual hiccups, but I think PC might have been the safe way to go on this one. I yeah yeah. At one point, like my character was knocked on the ground, and then there was an action scene where he was supposed to get up and help, but instead he walked sideways across the f- like across the floor. <laughs> he was sideways completely. Did you uh, take your Vita uh, and turn it sideways at that point <laughs> so that it looked like he was walking straight? <laughs> there was like so much texture popping oh, man. and audio jank throughout. Like I remember I paused it once and then the audio kept going. And then once I unpaused it, they had, they were speaking silently. Like the characters, the voices were gone. And it was just mouthing words. I mean, again, that's just a Vita thing, I think, but also, yeah, the, I could see a package because there is a, like a stop gap episode between season one and two called 400 days. Mm. 
So if you throw in like a package of the complete Walking Dead Telltale game, all three seasons plus four hundred days, that's a that's a package and a half for me. All right, but well, let but me tell you that, about the definitive s- series that they have on Steam. Yeah, and see that's what I'm talking about. But remaster it. So yeah, they actually threw in a lot of the original. Um, the, they redid the voice syncing. They redid the lighting and dy- the dynamic lighting for the episodes that didn't have it. They really did to kind of remaster it. All right, but it's, there we go. And here you but were. I, uh, yeah, and then overall, I think that the, like the emotions still hit hard. The the moments still hit, but I definitely on the second, having played a bunch of these types of games now, including like a Fallout or like you know. Um, games with all of these different choices i now definitely see like at the end oh here's the villain and the villain's like oh you did this thing and you could have done this thing how dare you and it's like just very much listing all of your binary choices that the game give you alex when you, you playing a fallout <laughs> uh i watched steve oh, okay beat. there I we go steve, <laughs> I, I watched steve beat fallout 4 and it was just the villain coming out and being like you know, you really helped this guy when you should have helped this guy. I mean, is it, can I use spoilers? Because this is already a spoiler cast. No. Sure. Yeah. Absolutely. So your dad came out and told you all that? <laughs> yeah, that's how the game was. That's a, that's a, I'm saying a lot of these games. I'm saying a lot of these games, that's like what happens. Is that it always kind of culminates. Like these choices are supposed to be a pain, but at the same time, they upset somebody. And at the end, the villain is that somebody that is upset by either choice. Every choice, that even if you chose to side with them. All right, guys, we are bordering on a crazy amount of time tonight. Let yeah. us end yeah, this. Fine. Let's do a quick, give me a fighter score, your fighter ranking, S through F. How do you feel about The Walking Dead Season 1, Alec? Well, not playing, having played the whole thing, I'm still going to give it a uh, B plus. All right. You don't have to justify anything. I know that you still have some uh, catching up to do if you chose to do it, but you're already a good chunk into episode three already. Yeah, I, I'm still going to try and finish it. All right. Joel? Solid A. I just, right. I just think it's a, a very good experience, despite whatever technical issues i had alex b plus uh it, it dropped in my what i originally remember this game being only because i can now see how like the background gears turning just like okay you did this and it equates to this or even just like playing it the first time and then playing it a second time and seeing like i made this choice the first time i made this choice the second time it kind of ended the same. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like the, like the answer, yeah. like, oh, if I do this, this happens. If I do this, that other thing also. Alex just, just wishes you could kill Kenny's family a second time, and then it would be an A. Free him from the burden of family. <laughs> no, I wanted Katya to survive. I didn't want Kenny. Mm, 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 mm. Yeah, but I just saw that, like, yeah, th- things I, d- I I started to feel a little bit like, my choices didn't always matter, and that's where I kind of started to see the gears turn. The emotional, the emotional points still hit really hard with me, so I was still like upset when things happened, and I was still, you know, living and dying. With yeah, a lot of these you still have to account for your actions. Having said that, yep. I would also give it an A minus. I love Telltale games. I'm sad that we don't have more, but we will have another one soon. And I know that there's at least one more that I want to play, but. The ability to choose, even if it isn't as monumentous every single time that you make a choice, is still something that appeals to me. And just being able to go in and have like weird interactions with people and trying different things to see what they'll, they'll do or say. All right. Uh, I am going to jump into our outro here. So that'll be it for this special spooky episode from Super GG Radio. Before we go, you can find us on Twitter at Super GG Radio and twitch.tv slash Super GG Radio, where Thursdays we sometimes have podcasts. And this next week we won't have one because we'll be doing Extra Life. You should check that out. We'll be up all 24 hours doing stuff to help raise funds for local children's hospitals. 
Um, we have some other programming here. I heard that Alex might be doing Skater XL on Tuesdays. Session. Skateboarding He'll be doing Tuesdays, session but... skateboarding on Tuesdays with some sick beats. Are you oh, going to yeah. be doing Monster Hunter Mondays? Monster Hunter Mondays. I just ended up having work hectic this week, but I'll be back to Monster Hunter Mondays. Love that. And then, Joel, do you have anything on the docket for us? Uh, after Extra Life, I'll go back to Punishment. You know that this is self-imposed punishment. Nobody's making you play. Yeah, at this point, you're supposed to be the I have to now. finish the fight. <laughs> Wait, you're not playing Mulan, are you? <laughs> to defeat the Hun. I can't afford to do that. All right. If you'd like to reach us with questions or input, our email address is mail at superggradio.com and provide us a review on iTunes or the podcast app of your choice. Thanks for listening and good game, Alec. Good game. A spooky GG to Joel. Ooh. <laughs> good game, Alex. <laughs> Ooh, good game. <laughs> Ooh, good night, everybody. <laughs> Ooh.